My senior year of high school, I took a film class that actively changed my life. The professor would show us various movies in order to help us establish things like story beats, dialogue, and camera composition. And it was in this class that I watched the film Harold and Maude for the first time. From the opening sequence of the movie, set to the sounds of Cat Stevens' Don't Be Shy, I was an immediate fan of the film. By the time the movie was over, I knew that it was my favorite film of all time. A title that I still give it almost 20 years from when I first watched it. Harold and Maude was a movie that made me love film on a different level than I had previously experienced. It also changed the type of music I listened to, the type of stories I wanted to tell, and how I wanted to live my life. But I'm getting ahead of myself. While Harold and Maude is a beloved cult classic, it's also a film that not very many people are aware exists. After 15 years as the editor of such classic films as The Cincinnati Kid, In the Heat of the Night, and The Thomas Crown Affair, Hal Ashby tried his hand at directing. His debut film, The Landlord, was a critical success, but a massive commercial disappointment. A year later, he released his second film, Harold and Maude, and was one of the earliest examples of dark comedy. While it was a critical and commercial disappointment at the time of release, it developed a cult following, and 50 years since its release has been ranked as one of the American Film Institute's funniest films ever made. The Writers Guild of America ranked it one of the greatest screenplays ever written, and the film was selected for preservation in the National Film Registry of the Library of Congress. So if the film is so important, why is it so unknown to so many? The film followed a young man in his 20s named Harold, who is intrigued by death. Once in college, he caused an explosion in a science lab after hours that briefly led to his mother believing he was killed. The grief showed at his death showed more love for Harold than anything she had ever shown him previously. This led to him torturing his mother with a series of mock suicides and spending most of his free time driving around in a hearse and attending strangers' funerals. It's at one of these funerals that he meets Maud, a 79-year-old concentration camp survivor who lives every moment of her life as a blessing. The two fall in love, which, as someone who's shown this movie to many people, can be a breaking point for some. Blended with the dark comedy is plenty of anti-war commentary, some incredible visual juxtaposition, and some of the most powerfully uplifting speeches you'll ever hear. And it's all set to the sounds of Cat Stevens. Bud Court was an up-and-coming star due to his appearances in Robert Altman films like M.A.S.H. and Brewster McCloud. Reportedly, his friends in the industry strongly suggested that he not take the part of Harold, fearing that it would kill his career momentum. And unfortunately, they were right. Court's career stalled after the release of the film and only picked up steam close to two decades later when directors like Kevin Smith, John Favreau, and Wes Anderson, who grew up as fans of Harold and Maude, started throwing him roles in their films. While Court's performance is subdued and fantastic, Ruth Gordon oozes with raw energy throughout the film, so much so that I often find myself forgetting that it's just an actress playing a role. Every scene she appears in is packed with brilliant comedic timing, incredible monologues, and a never-ending stream of positive energy. However, Ruth Gordon and Bud Court may be the top build, but the music of Cat Stevens acts as its own character. Similarly to The Graduate a few years earlier, almost all of the music in the film comes from Cat Stevens' catalog, utilizing songs from his albums Mona Bone Jackin and Tea for the Tiller Man. He also wrote two songs for the soundtrack, Don't Be Shy and If You Want to Sing Out, Sing Out. Neither of these songs were released on any Stevens album until his Greatest Hits compilation in 1984. Sing Out, Sing Out has become a calling card for fans of the film and has appeared in countless movies and TV shows, including Charlie Bartlett, My Name is Earl, Ray Donovan, and Boss Baby, The Family Business. I struggled to put to words how much this movie meant to me in 2004 when I saw it. In general, my senior year was an amazing time, and most of my time I didn't fit into school. I felt like an outcast constantly, and the only thing I wanted to do was make movies. And it was during my freshman year that I saw Clerks for the first time that it introduced me to the world of indie films. I could dive deeper into that in a future video, but it was my favorite film until Harold and Maude came along, so I think it's a detail that's worth mentioning. By the time I got to my senior year, the only classes I needed to graduate were English and gym, so I was able to fill my other five classes with all film and art courses. And it was through these classes that I made some of my strongest high school friendships, 
and push myself creatively for the first time. It's also worth mentioning that up until this point, I listened almost exclusively to punk and ska music. And not just any punk and ska music, Christian punk and ska music. So while I would never say I fully identified with the common parody of a Christian teen that's overly preachy and problematic, I can admit that I definitely wasn't good at having my beliefs challenged in those days. Harold and Maude not only inspired me from a visual stance, but it presented me ideas that were challenging, and I got my first taste of enjoying the feeling of deconstructing my beliefs. It also presented songwriting and genres that I'd only just begun to dabble in. I was in the very early stages of listening to some indie darlings like Neutral Milk Hotel, Modest Mouse, and Death Cab for Cutie, but it was the songs of Cat Stevens that really kickstarted my college indie music phase into full gear. It's been 50 years of Harold and Maude, and almost 20 years of me adoring it. If you've gone all these years not even knowing of it, then I really recommend you make it a point to give it a watch. To quote another indie film that I'm sure I'll make a video about one day. It'll change your life, I swear. Thanks for watching.